Hello, and thank you for joining us for another segment here on PLCGurus.net YouTube channel. Uh, specifically, uh, we're looking at the Stratix 5700 and now some of its more advanced capabilities. So this will be part of our Networking Essentials video series. So today what I wanted to look at is some of the VLAN routing or inter-VLAN routing capabilities of this Stratic 5700. So bearing in mind that you do need to have the full software capability on this switch in order to enable the routing capabilities. So um, let's just get right into it. So the Stratix 8000, 8300, 5700, 5410, 5400 and Cisco switches allow networks to be segmented using virtual LANs or VLANs for short. And again, we're, we're going to be honing in specifically on the 5700 because that's what I happen to have here in my lab environment. So what are VLANs? Well, VLANs are used to segregate traffic on networks. Um, and inter-VLAN routing is a mechanism used to allow a device to communicate with devices on different VLANs. So a typical scenario uh, where this would be needed is where there you have several automation devices such as PLCs, controllers, each on its own VLAN. However, they all need to work together as part of a larger SCADA or data collection type system where the SCADA system needs to communicate with each individual controller that's been configured on its own separate VLAN. And like I said, the, the 5700 does have the VLAN routing provided you have the full software out of the box. Okay, before we dive right into the configuration of the Stratix itself, I thought we'd spend a couple of minutes just reviewing how my lab environment is set up. Um, I think it's important and then you can refer back to it as we're going through some of the configurations if you're, you're thinking to yourself, why the heck is he doing this? Okay, so just very simply, I have two, effectively two controllers two Ethernet bridges uh, in my lab environment here. And you can see I'm going to set up the controller A that's going to be on, configured on VLAN 10 with an IP address of 172.16.10.10 using the slash 24 or 255.255.255.0 subnet mask. And then I have another controller, controller B we'll call it, and I'm going to configure that controller on VLAN 11 and it follows that I'm going to set the IP address of that guy up at 172.16.11.10 slash 24 again. And you can see here I have my Stratix switch and with routing enabled. So out of the box this switch will not have routing enabled. We will have to enable that and I'll walk you through how to do that. It's very straightforward. Um, and we're going to set the router IP address on VLAN 1, the default VLAN, at 172.16.1.1. And then my development PC, again, is going to be on that same VLAN 1 uh, at 172.16.1.245. And we should see that after we go ahead and make all of the VLAN routing configurations through the VLAN management tool, uh, that this PC over here on the dot one network should be able to communicate with both the controller A on the dot 10 network here and controller B on the dot 11 network. And yeah, if all goes well, that should be no problem at all. Okay, so I've just initiated the express setup on the switch. If you haven't seen my video on how to initiate the express setup process, I do encourage you to head on over to our YouTube, uh, YouTube channel, sorry or head on over to plcgurus.net and you can view it right there directly on our website and become a member at the same time. Uh, okay, so let's just go ahead and get right into our device manager. And uh, you can see it's, it's prompting me for additional login settings. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy in the IP address of the switch. Oh. And network change, oh, there we go. And okay, so the default username and password, admin, and switch and we're going to go ahead and log in here so the first thing we want to do is just initiate the express setup and set up the uh, ip address for what eventually is going to be our router so we'll just give this a minute okay and here we go so i'm going to go ahead and give it a host name i'm going to call it a uh, router and we'll leave the management vlan at one um, and the IP address is going to be 172.16.1.1. .1 .1. 
Okay, and that's just as we said in the, um, the, the PowerPoint slide earlier, okay? And we'll just leave this at the default switch password. Okay, I'm gonna click Submit there, and then we'll go ahead and get logged in with the new IP address. Okay, so let's head on over to our network uh, settings here, and we'll go ahead and change our NIC address to the subnet of the new IP that we created for the router. So let's go 172.16.1.245. I'm just going by what we set up in the slides of the lab environment. Again, we're going to use a 255.255.255.0 address there for the subnet. And the gateway will be the router itself. So that will be 1.1 that we just configured in the router. Okay, I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click Close. Close that. And just for completeness, why don't we open up RS Links and take a look to see if we are in fact seeing our switch at our newly configured IP address. So I'm going to go to Communications, Configure Drivers. We'll go ahead and select the Ethernet IP device driver, Add New. And if you haven't seen my video on how to do this again, you can uh, view that video right on YouTube or over at our www.plcgurus.net uh, blog site. Okay, so let's take a look and we should see our Stratix populate. Bang, there we go. Okay, so I think we can head now over. Now we've confirmed that we are communicating on the newly configured IP address. I'm going to go ahead and just minimize that and head on over to the device manager once again. Let's type in the new address this time of our router. And here we go. And again, the default password is switch. And let's go ahead and log in. Okay, so you can see that we are um, configured here. You can see I have my computer actually plugged into uh, port 16 here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and go ahead and connect my other devices as per our lab uh, network layout. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay, so you can see now that I do have my one Ethernet bridge plugged into port 1, my other Ethernet bridge plugged into port 3, and my computer plugged into port 16. Uh, it might be a good time just to do a quick review on my lab setup, uh, just in case we've forgotten about it already. So here we go, controller A plugged into port 1. Uh, we're going to set that up on VLAN 10. Controller B plugged into port 3. We're going to set that up on VLAN 11. We've already configured now the switch uh, on the 1.1 network here, uh, or IP address here. And my PC is already set up on the 1.245 IP address. Okay, so let's head on back to our device manager. And I think the first thing we're going to want to do is go ahead and actually enable the routing functionality on this switch. Like I said before, um, by default, out of the box, this just functions as a layer two switch with NAT capabilities. So to enable the layer three routing capabilities, we have to go over to the admin tab initially, go to the SDM template. And choose the LAN based routing template. And then click submit. And this is going to kick it. So it says, okay, yeah, let's enable routing. And this will take a few minutes, so we might as well pause the video and come on back. Okay, so we have success here. It says the template has been changed successfully. Uh, so it took about, uh, I would say, three or four, maybe five minutes, all in all. Okay, okay, so now that we have that done, let's go ahead and head over to the configure tab and head down to routing. And what we want to do here is we want to go ahead and enable routing by cl clicking this checkbox. And then for the gateway, we want to route all traffic from any VLAN. So we're going to go ahead and type in 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 here. Okay, and then we're going to click Submit. So I think the first thing we'll do is head on over to the Configure Smart Ports uh, section. I mean, I know a lot of people don't actually use these, but I generally like to because what it does is it applies the roles 
uh, specific to the device that you're configuring on a given port. And it does all the back end Cisco configurations for you. Um, so if you're not a Cisco iOS guru, um, this is probably the easiest way to go about it to ensure that um, your settings are optimized. So again, switch port one, we're gonna go ahead and assign an automation device to that because we have our PLC, one of our PLCs plugged there. I'll click save. Then I'm gonna go ahead and go over to port three. Again, automation device, click. Okay. All right, I don't know why it's doing that. Let's try again. Oh, maybe I'm just going too quick. Uh, click save. And then I'm on port 60 with my computer. I'm gonna go ahead and set that up as a desktop for automation. And I'm gonna click save there. Okay. So now that we have our smart roles configured, let's go ahead and start setting up our VLAN management. So I'm gonna go click VLAN management. And you can see by default, every port was assigned to the default VLAN, the only VLAN that's currently configured in the switch, which is VLAN one. And of course it's gonna get assigned the 172.16.1.1 address we gave the router. So let's go ahead and, con and, and configure the two VLANs that we're using, namely VLAN 10 and VLAN 11. So I'm gonna do that by clicking add, and I'm gonna give it a VLAN ID. I'm gonna give this one a 10, and let's just call it VLAN 10. And we're gonna go ahead and give it a static IP address, and this is going to be 172.16.10. With the subnet mask of 255, whoops, dot 255, dot 255, dot zero. Okay, and that'll just take a second to configure that VLAN for us. And there it is. Uh, notice we don't have any ports assigned to it yet, but we will do that. So I'm going to go ahead and add the VLAN 11. And so let's go ahead and give it a VLAN ID 11. We're gonna call it VLAN 11, and again, we're just gonna repeat what we just did, but this time, we're gonna give it an address of 11. And click OK. And give it a second, okay. So now we have our three VLANs configured. And so now let's head over on over to the uh, port settings and assign some ports to these different VLANs. And you go up to the configure, port settings and what we want to do now is assign port 1 which is the PLC that we want to assign our controller A to this VLAN so let's go ahead and change the access VLAN which is currently set the default one and choose VLAN 10 click OK and of course we're going to do the same with port 3 which is has controller B connected, and we want to tie that one into VLAN 11. So I'm going to go ahead and edit that and change that to the VLAN 11. Click OK. So you can see now that port 1 is assigned to VLAN 10. Port 3 is now assigned to VLAN 11, and everything else is on the default uh, VLAN number 1. So just for completeness, just as a, to take a, a look, let's head on back to the VLAN management screen again. And we should see the same results, but just for completeness. And there you have it, VLAN 10, port one, port three is on VLAN 11. Perfect, and that's it. I mean, we've effectively created all of the necessary routing um, for a device or PC or what have you on VLAN number one to communicate to any device on either VLAN 10 or VLAN 11. So let's just refresh and take a look at our layout again. And like I said, this PC now should be able to talk to either this PLC or this PLC, and they're on two completely different networks and two completely different virtual local area networks. Okay, cool. Well, I guess the logical next step here is to test it. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's just open up trusty RS links. And there you go. There is our router now. And we can now call it a router because it is in fact configured and acting like a router. So let's go ahead and configure this driver and add our 
two PLCs. So we have 172.16.10.10. So there's a controller A on VLAN 10. And we have controller B 11.10 on VLAN 11. Okay, there we go. Click OK. And with any luck, we should see these things come through. And bang, there you have it. It works. Fantastic. And I can drill through and see what's there. And everything is good. So I hope you've found this video informative and please do click the subscribe button below. And I do want to do a quick plug for our blog site. Come visit us at www.plcgurus.net and can become an active member in our community. We've just recently launched a forum so that our community members can answer and ask questions in real time. So again, thank you for watching.